This is Rhea's week one video recap. So we're starting out with a little bit of play since I just got her out of her crate. I'm a big fan of letting the dogs play for a few minutes before you start working with them. So today we're using a flirt pole. It's kind of like a big cat toy. Um, I like to use this because you can have her chase it around um, and you're kind of keeping your hands away from her mouth. So a lot of times what happens, especially with puppies, is when we're hanging onto a toy, getting them to chase it and grab onto it, our hand can kind of become an extension of that toy and then now they're chewing on us instead of the toy. So this is a nice way to play with your dog um, and kind of keeping your hands away from their mouth. It's also nice too because I can kind of fling it around, get her chasing it real good, and then every so often I'm going to let her catch it like she has it right now and she's squeaking it. And then I can tug on it a little bit, play some nice tug of war with her. I'm not pulling her across the room, I'm not lifting her up off the ground. Just a little bit of light opposition on the toy. And then if she lets it go, I can get her chasing it again. So we've actually been playing with this for a couple minutes now. Um, I prefer to do it in the living room on the carpet. I'm doing it in here just for the sake of this video. Um, I also, while our dog is in possession of a toy, I do like to get them used to being touched while they have a toy in their mouth. Good girl. All right, let's move on. That was very good. So the first thing that we started with Rhea is um, some food luring. So for this, I'm just taking a piece of food, getting her nice and connected to it. So she's licking it in my hand right now. And then I'm just gonna take a few steps back before I mark and reward. Yes. Yes. I've also been pairing this with her name. Rhea. Yes. Yes. Rhea. Yes. So we've been also pairing this with having her wear her head collar. Um, I know you guys have been using this for her walks and getting her used to this. So something that I like to do is have my dog wear it while I'm doing other training exercises with them, not only when I'm walking them. So the easiest way to get this on your dog, I clip this back part that's going to go over her ears. Um, and then this is the part that goes on her nose. You're just going to hang on to both loops. And then you're going to put food in your other hand and kind of get her to dress herself. She's taking a drink of water. When she comes back over, I'll try to show this to you at an angle you can see it. Thirsty girl. Okay, here we go. All right, so head collar in one hand, food in the other. Getting her to just dress herself here. Yes, good girl. So now she has it on. I'm going to get her moving right away, because if our dog is moving, Rhea, yes, if they're moving around with this on, they're going to be less likely to try to paw and get it off if we're keeping them busy. Yes. Yes. Rhea. Yes. Good girl. Okay. And then next I'm going to get her attached to her leash. So the easiest way to get her leash on her without much fuss is I'm going to grab a few pieces of food. I'm going to let her start to kind of lick at it while I find the ring that I'm going to attach to the head collar. And then I'm going to put the food on the ground. And while she's eating that, I'll hook her up to her leash. Good girl. Rhea. Yes. Rhea. Yes. Rhea. Yes. Good girl. Okay. This week we've been practicing getting Rhea into heel position. So this is going to be the very first step in our loose leash walking. So for this, you're going to start with the dog facing you. You're going to have your uh, food in the hand that's going to be on the same side as the dog. So if we want her on the left, the food's going to be in my left hand, the leash is going to be in my right. So we're going to start with her facing me. I'm going to show her I have the food. I'm going to bring my arm back behind me to get her to move backwards. Yes, mark and reward there with one piece of food. And then with another piece of food, I'm going to get her to turn around and mark once she's in heel position. Yes. Okay, and I'm always going to use her release word to let her break out of that position. Yes. Yes. Okay. She needs another water break. <laughs> so after we've practiced that a couple times, 
then we can start getting that to be one fluid movement and marking and rewarding just once for her getting into heel position. So I have been calling this heel with her. Rhea. Oh, you got that off. So if she wiggles out of this, we can just start over by putting it back on her. So I'm going to clip this together, hold both the loops, use food, get her to stick her head in there, and then slip that back piece behind her ear. Good girl. Okay. So now we're going to get her into heel position with just one fluid movement. Rhea, heel. Yes. So I'm only marking and rewarding once she's in heel. Yes. If she puts herself into a sit, I am going to mark and reward that because we want her going into an auto sit when we stop. Yes. Okay. Rhea, heel. Yes. See if she'll go into that sit. Yes. Yes. Okay. Rhea, heel. Yes. Yes, good girl. Yes. Okay. So after we've done a couple reps of her getting into heel position and then offering us a sit, We've been working on taking just a couple of steps forward, and when I stop, I want her to go back into a sit, and that's when I'm going to reward her a second time. So I'm going to get her into heel, Rhea, heel, yes, whoops, so if she drops a treat like that, just start over and get her, getting her back into heel position, Rhea, heel, yes. So I'm going to grab more food, put it right to her nose, let's go, take just a few steps, and then I'm going to stop, bring that hand up, she puts herself into the sit, yes, that's where I mark and reward. Okay. Rhea, heel, yes. Yes. Good puppy. Yes. Break. You're a thirsty girl today. We'll do that one more time. Rhea, heel. Yes. Good girl. Yes. So notice I'm not asking her to sit. I'm just waiting for her to offer it. Let's go. Yes. Okay, good girl. So then after we're done practicing getting her into heel position and moving a little bit, then I'm going to take her head collar off. So this is going to be similar to getting it on her. She's going to grab some food, let her start to nibble on that, while you unclip it, and slip it off of her. Good girl. So we've been reviewing Rhea's hand targets, her sits, and her downs. So we'll start with her hand targets. For this, she's pretty much to the point where I have to put out a flat hand without any food in it to begin with. So what I've been doing since she's really good at that is getting her to do touch a couple of times with me before I'll give her a reward. So instead of touch, reward, touch, reward, touch, reward, we're going to have her do a series of three before I reward her. Rhea, touch, 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 yes. What a good puppy. Okay. Rhea, touch, 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 yes. So I like that, to use the hand target kind of as an informal recall for our dog if we need them to come over to us, but we're not going to go through the steps of doing a formal recall. We can use our hand targets um, as a simplified form of that. Rhea, touch, yes. Good girl. Uh, the next thing that we've reviewed are her sits and her downs. She's been doing really well with this. Um, we really haven't been using the food lures. Maybe the first rep on the down I'll have to help her, uh, but for the most part she's been doing it with e either hearing just the verbal cue or the verbal cue and then giving her a hand signal. 
So since she's in it down, it's gonna toss a reset cookie. Okay. Bria, sit. Down. Yes. What a good puppy. Okay. This I've been practicing a lot in the living room with on the carpet. Sometimes she sits down on this floor and then kind of slides into the down. Bria. Good puppy. Okay. We'll run through that one more time. Rhea, sit. Down. Yes. Okay. We've been reviewing Rhea's mat skill or her place command. Um, so for this, I'm just going to put this down in the middle of the floor. Actually, Got to unfold it one more time. I know it's super interesting. Bria, place. Yes. So she's doing pretty good at settling into that down when she finds her position on place. Um, my suggestion would be if she goes over onto a place and puts herself into a sit, I want you to kind of wait her out and see if she'll offer you this down before you try to lure her. If after 10, 15 seconds, she's not going into the down, just take a piece of food and lure her into the down that way, but don't say down. So like the end goal or the big picture of place is she finds her mat and settles into a down on it. So we don't want to be using the place cue and the down cue. It's just gonna be place and that's gonna encompass her going into the down on the mat. Okay, I'm gonna show this to you again. Rhea, place. Yes. Okay, we've been practicing adding a little bit of movement to this, meaning I'm able to move away from her. It's gonna be unrealistic for us to always be right next to her while she's on place. So we wanna get her used to us moving away. So what I'm gonna do is take a couple steps back, I'm gonna mark it, yes, and then come back to her and put the food right on the mat. And then I'll do the same thing, but I'm going to walk in a different direction. Yes. Yes. I also want you guys to practice turning your back to her. Yes. Because it's going to be pretty unrealistic for us to move away from her backwards. We want to be able to turn our back and walk away from our dog and have them stay. Yes. And every so often you do want to let her break off of here. Okay. Rhea, place. So I'm just going to wait her out. Yes, good girl. And you can practice this in different rooms. Um, if we're only practicing place in one room or in the same spot all the time, She's not going to understand that place can happen anywhere, so I want you practicing this in different rooms in your house. Yes! This looks really good. Yes, good puppy! Okay. So we're going to move right into our recall exercises for Rhea. So I know that um, having a reliable recall is pretty important for you guys. So uh, this week we're doing two different things to start to build up that recall with her. The first one is called the flying cookie game. Rhea! Yes, so I'm going to mark that because I said her name and she came over to me. So flying cookie game. You're going to take a piece of food, give her her release word, and toss it away from you. <laughs> Rhea, okay. As she's finishing up that food, you're going to say her name. Rhea! Yes, as soon as she turns back towards you, you're going to mark and reward her pretty close to your body. And then you're going to toss another reset cookie. Rhea. Okay. Rhea. Yes. Okay. Rhea. Yes. So if you say her name and she is not responding to you, I don't want you to continually repeat her name because 
all that's teaching her is that she does not need to listen to you the first time you say it. Um, she may listen to you the third or fourth time. She may not listen at all. We want to um, get her in the habit of responding that first time, right? It's not optional. Okay, so if she doesn't respond, we have three options. You can either bop, 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 make some sort of silly noise to get her attention. If she's on leash, you can put some steady backwards pressure on the leash to get her to come towards you. Okay. Or you can go up to her and literally stick a piece of food in front of her face and get her to turn around. Yes, good girl. So I'm gonna run through that a couple more times here. Okay. Rhea, yes. So you wanna mark as soon as she responds to her name. You don't wanna wait, okay, until she's all the way back to you. Rhea, yes. Reason being, if you say her name, she starts to come towards you and you're giving her no feedback, she's going to be less likely to follow through versus if she turns towards you and immediately hears her marker words, she knows that means a treat is coming, she's gonna be much more likely to follow all the way through and come and get that reward from you. Okay. Rhea, yes. So that's the first part of teaching our dog a reliable recall. The second part is um, charging her recall words. So you guys have been using come. So I want you practicing this with her every single day. It's not gonna take her long. All we're doing is we're taking a piece of food, saying come, dropping the food at our feet. Moving, saying it again, come, drop the food at our feet. And maybe do this four or five times. Come. Come. Okay, so we're getting her to make the association between hearing that word and being rewarded right at our feet. So if you can do that once a day with her, just four or five times, that would be a good place to start, right? There you go. This week we started to introduce a wait cue to Rhea, so this is going to be helpful in having her wait nicely until you release her out of her crate. And this is also going to be used um, when we are doing our door manners, having her wait until we release her to go through a doorway. So for um, the crate this week, what I've been doing is taking a piece of food, tossing it in, crate, yes, saying yes once all four paws are in, and then I'm going to lock it, and then as soon as she sits down or shows me any sort of calm behavior, I'm going to mark that again, yes, and then I'm going to unlock this, tell her to wait, Rhea, wait. Open that door. Okay. Use her release cue to let her out. Beautiful. I'll run through that again. Rhea crate. Yes. Yes. Wait. Okay. We'll do that one more time. Rhea. Yes. Yes. Wait. Okay. Good girl. She's been doing really well with that. So next week the plan is to add some distance, meaning I'm able to move away from the crate and she stays calm. And uh, we also want to see if we can get her to the point where we can get her in the crate without having to toss that food in first. I'm still going to mark and reward her for going in the crate, but the goal next week is going to be able to, uh, are going to try to be able to get her to go in without having to initially lure her with that food. This week we started working on Rhea's door manners. So um, the goal this week is to be able to open the door and start to step out of it while she remains either in a sit or a down. Um, I'm not so worried about inviting her to go through the threshold this week. That will work on next week, but I want to get her used to sitting and waiting um, when she hears or sees the door opening. For me, open door is not an invitation for our dog to run out of it. So we're going to start practicing here at the door, and then we're going to start to transfer this to the gate as well. It's going to be the same concept, getting her to sit and wait nicely while we open the gate before we invite her through. Rhea, sit. So typically what I'll do is when I get her into a sit or a down, I'm not going to reward her right away because a lot of times what happens is you give them the reward for that, 
and they're like, all right, peace out. I got my treat. I'm done. So she's anticipating I'm going to give her a treat at some point. I'm going to withhold giving that to her because she is going to be more likely to stay in position. So she put herself into a down. Part of it is this flooring. She's been putting herself into a sit and then sliding into a down. So as long as she's in a sit or a down, I really don't care which one. We just want her to stay in whatever position she's in when we're working with the door. So after she's in position, you're going to give her her weight cue, just like we did for the crate, where you'll wait. You're going to reach for the door and maybe open it a couple of inches. If she stays, yes, you're going to mark and reward. So since she popped up, I am just going to make sure that she gets back into position before I actually deliver that reward. back on the down so we're just going to give her that same cue. Wait. Yes. Wait. Yes. So if at any point while you're doing this she pops up you're just going to stop and reset. You're going to get her back into the sit or a down and start over. Rhea, wait. Yes. Rhea, wait. Yes. Good girl. So she's been doing really well with that. Next week we will start to incorporate what to do once you're outside releasing her to come through the doorway. Good job, girl. Yeah. This week for Rhea's body handling skills, we have been working on restraint holds, which you'll commonly see done at the vet when they go in to have vaccinations done. Um, or sometimes they might do it like at the groomer. Something you'll see pretty commonly throughout her life is a restraint hold. Um, and then we've just been working on handling different body parts. So her feet, tail, ears, mouth, etc. Um, we just want to make sure that she's comfortable with us handling those body parts, that she's not hesitant or stiffening up when we're doing any of this. Uh, so the more that we can handle her and get her used to these um, techniques and handling skills, the better off it will be as far as her having to receive vet care and potentially grooming care um, for her entire life. So we're going to start out with our restraint hold. She is a very wiggly puppy. So for this, it might be a little bit awkward getting her into position. She's very wiggly and she's so focused on this food. Which isn't a bad thing, but it can make it challenging to get her to hold still. So we've been practicing our food luring. We're going to use that quite a bit for this. So I'm going to get her interested in the food first and then I'm going to try to get her to move into position where I need her. So for a restraint hold, we're literally just going underneath her belly and doing a quick little hug. Yes! And then marking it with a yes and releasing a piece of food. We can get her back into position again. And you're going under her belly, very light squeeze, and you're not holding it, just very quick, marking it with a yes and releasing. Okay, and I'm going to reset her for a second here. All right, let's try that one again. So get her interested in a piece of food, get her to move into position, flip your hand under her belly, yes, release that piece of food. Okay, and I'm going to reset her in between because, yeah, she's so focused on this food. So when she comes back, grab another piece. Get her into position. Whoops. Ready? Yeah. There we go, silly girl. Yes. Good girl. So now next is our uh, body handling. So for this, I'll start with her ears. Come on. Yeah. And we're not doing it real long, just kind of flipping her ear over, taking a quick peek. Yes. Good girl. We can do uh, her tail. So for this, all I'm doing is just hanging out to the base of the tail. I'm not flipping it around or anything, just hanging on to it, putting a little bit of light pressure. Yes. Good girl. Okay. We can handle her paws. Yes. So with the paw, um, to get her ready to have her nails trimmed, I like to, whoops, we lost a piece of food. Okay. I like to hang out of her paw and kind of isolate one toe and kind of pull the fur back and get a nail ready to clip. 
uh, just getting her used to you holding on to her nail for a prolonged or her foot for a prolonged period of time. Um, it's not going to be real long. I'll show you what this will look like. It's a, a couple seconds. So you're going to grab onto her paw, isolate one toe, and then kind of put a little pressure on it to get that nail to come out. And that would prep her for getting a nail trim. Yes, good girl. You can do this with her back paws as well. Back paw might be a little tougher just because she is so squirmy. Let's try that one again. Yes, good girl. I've also been getting her used to um, like pulling up her gums to look at her teeth and then also lightly pulling back on her eyelids as if we were going to be looking into her eyes, checking those out. So I'll do her eye first. So just very light pressure and pulling up a little bit, not real hard. Yes, and then marking and rewarding that. You are so wiggly, girlfriend. Okay, and then for her mouth, as she's chewing on that piece of food, I'm just, you are all over, girl. Here, they gotta be able to see ya. There we go. So I'm just gonna lightly pull up her gums. Yes, and mark and reward that. Good girl.